Hi everyone, Bernard here. I hope you're all staying safe and well. And welcome to the Citizen Channel. We do a, another History Boys vlog as uh, as I'm recording this. We've got uh, the visit of Paris Saint Germain to the Etihad Stadium on the 4th of May 2021 for the little matter of a semi final second leg. So we're going to continue our look on our History Boys at our previous meetings. Yeah, we covered the last time. Uh, only away meeting in Paris before this season's, uh, of course, semi-final uh, back in 2016. So we we had a look at that. But we've actually played um, Paris Saint-Germain twice at the Etihad uh, in recent times before this semi-final. Um, one in the UEFA Cup and one in the uh, Champions League. So we're going to do a little History Boys feature on that today. So please join me as we'll have a look at that please if you're new to the channel push that subscribe button push the notifications button if you if you enjoy what you do i try and inform and entertain as we're going through here not uh factually correct as far as i know i get a lot of them so obviously recent sourcing information but anything you spot just give us a shout because sometimes my brain doesn't quite engage with my mouth so obviously sometimes i do something a little bit wrong but uh, please forgive me if i do that uh, i do my little best for you anyway so check all my city past and present vlogs uh history stuff new stuff uh quizzes uh, book clubs loads of different things as well so please check that out if you can and you'll also see some film and tv stuff as well yeah i love film and tv so i do uh, movie reviews tv drama reviews information vlogs etc etc on on there so if that's of any interest if you want to have a break from football please check that out as well that'd be absolutely fantastic and please any comments are always very very welcome and if you need any followers or friends on facebook and twitter just uh seek out the links that are on screen now i do follow and ch follow and friend everyone back i do check every two or three days and i post loads of city stuff on there of course uh, funny entertaining serious not so serious whatever, whatever i post loads of stuff on there so please seek that out and if you've no time to leave us a comment today about City, about this game, or about the games against PSG, or anything you want to comment about, if you've no time to do that, just give us a little thumbs up. It's nice, it's nice to get views, but it's nice to get thumbs up as well. Right, on to the history, boys. Uh, Manchester City versus Paris Saint-Germain. Uh, yeah, we first met on the 3rd of December 2008 at the Etihad in a Group A match it was at the time. Uh, the group had five teams, but because of the machinations of this UEFA Cup and how many teams, I mean, there's lots of teams in it, uh, we only actually played against a team once. So we didn't play home and the leg games, we actually only played one, one leg. So obviously that was sort of picked out at the start, who you're going to play at home and who you're going to play away. Uh, so it could be either of those, obviously. And City's third game, was a match uh, was a match against uh, PSG we'd actually uh, led the group after two wins we played two and won two which actually had already meant by that stage that we qualified for the next round so that wasn't too bad was it but uh, PSG was struggling a little bit at the time they'd actually drawn one and lost one so they needed to do something uh, to get through and progress in this UEFA competition as I say it was a bit of a bit of a I mean do you think they think what we've got now is a bit of a mess I mean it was e even more so then so we're going to go back to 3rd of December 2008. Yeah, just have a quick look at that one. An attendance, not the greatest attendance at a 47,000 capacity Etsy, I don't forget. 25,626. And it did end a nil-nil draw. So what wasn't the most uh, exciting of games. City team that day had Hart, Zabaleta, Benheim, Dunn, Company, Garrido, Ireland, Elano, Vassell, Sturridge and Joe. Yeah, subs, we had Benjani, he came on in the 49th minute. Casido, he was unused. Schmeichel was unused. Bertie was unused. Logan was unused. Haman came on in the 75th minute and Evans came on in the 65th minute. So <laughs> some great, some great names there for City fans of, of that ilk and memory. Even you say it's 13 years ago, it does seem a long, long time ago. PSG had players like Landro, Traore, Barillion, Camera, Sacco, Pancrati, Makaleli, Clement, Rothen, Kesman, Luyundula, Sub was Geely, he came on in the 69th minute, Aman came on in the 59th minute, Hural came on in the 32nd minute, for, for, pardon my pronunciations, I don't get any of these wrong, Apula was unused, Kera was unused, Mabila was unused, and Nagoi was unused. Yeah, so there you go, it uh, did feature several City's fringe players, of course, a, a couple of youngsters, 
of course you might recognise from that team sheet. And despite City having been the take, obviously the subject of the takeover, of course, by the Abu Dhabi group uh, a few months previous to this, uh, before the match, our squad hasn't quite undergone its extensive uh, multi-million pound oil money refit, had it, let's be honest about it. Uh, but it will soon, obviously, over the following season, see a bit of a change to that. So obviously we're still feeling such legendary names as um, Garrido and Joe and, well, Richard Dunney is a legend. Of course he's a legend. He was a true legend. Uh, Vassell and Tal Ben Haim, of course. Um, PSG were not much better there. A little transformation was uh, still uh, about three years away at the time of this game. So uh, instead of the Ibrimovic and uh, Di Maria and Cavani and Verratti, we had the likes of uh, Roth and uh, Kesman and an ageing Makalele were about as exciting as PSG could offer and the Parisiens could offer for the match. Uh, yeah, as I said, it was a nil-nil. The match was fairly tepid. I mean, it did, did have its moments, don't get me wrong, but uh, it did end nil-nil, which uh, still guaranteed City at least second place then by that round. And there's no, we couldn't finish any lower than second. As I said, we'd already qualified anyway. And uh, that gave us the ability to drop any of the teams that dropped out of the Champions League. So there you go. I mean, even in those days, we still had this thing where losers losers come back into it. So there you go. So we did have the ability by finishing second to avoid that, obviously, in another sort of seeded mess around of a draw, obviously, for the next round. Uh, yep, we would eventually top the group uh, despite defeat in our last game. So even though, I say, we, we actually were only, only there, we actually avoided defeat and managed to top the group in that game. So... Uh, we were both, of course, us and ourselves and PSG would actually go on to the quarterfinals that year. I mean, we mentioned Hamburg, great night, obviously, at, at the Etihad that night, but uh, not good enough, unfortunately, was it? But uh, both ourselves and PSG would go out in the quarterfinals. So, yeah, it was very, very two different, very teams that met in the Premier European competition some eight years later, of course, wasn't it, in 2016? And it was a place in the semi-final. We didn't know who we were going to play then. They didn't do these draws where you knew uh, beforehand who your semi-final opponents was going to be as well as your quarter-final opponents. So we didn't quite know at the time, but obviously it was going to be a semi-final place against Real Madrid, wasn't it, in, uh, the prize for the victor in this one? But as as stated in the last history boys have done, and you probably know anyway, a two two draw in Paris the previous week had turned the two legged affair slightly to City's advantage, perhaps more so than these days, where PSG are perhaps uh, quite a good uh, a, a lot better away from home, but not quite as good up there in those days. Uh, but we still have the business to do, of course, at the Etihad on Tuesday, the twelfth of April, twenty sixteen. Pellegrini, yeah, Pellegrini was in charge, of course. He he took us to that semi final against Real Madrid. Had not been at our, we're not been at our best had we that season. Leicester Leicester were the surprise package, of course. We kept expecting them to blow up but they never did did they and with just six uh six leads to games to go they were fairly well not miles clear but they were clear and uh, firm favorites for the title obviously uh we sat four four points ahead of united and uh, we're still going for quali uh, Champions League qualification, of course. At that stage, was still, uh, well, as it is now, uh, you know, something we needed to get, wasn't it? Uh, we'd support, secured a Carabao Cup victory, which, uh, no surprise there. But in the Champions League, we'd had uh, more or less smooth progression to this quarter final. We hadn't had any real hiccups as such. And, of course, we were favourites, firm favourites on the night to beat PSG. But, uh, as I said, confident. PSG was still confident, so not 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 quite the team that they are away from home perhaps now but uh, they've just been confirmed as the French title winners as well uh, so if we go through the teams that night a good crowd 53,039 uh, the teams that night uh, was City was Hart, Sanya, Otamendi, Mangala Clichy, Fernando, Fernandinho, Navas, Silva, De Bruyne and Aguero. The subs, Torre, come on on 83 minutes Delph on 87 minutes Iheanacho on 92 minutes Caballero, Boni Collar off and Zabaleta were all unused. PSG team that night Trap, Diego Silva, Marquinhos, Diego Motta, Cavani, Ibramovic, Di Maria, Maxwell, Aurier, Vanderveel, Rabiot. So there you go, a few names still, still knocking around there. Uh, Subs Lucas came on 45, Pastor came on 61, Sidigu was unused, as was Kimbempe, Stambouli, Kozawa, and Ongenda. Again, my apologies for any pronunciations there. So rather than just a match report, as we did with the last History Boys uh, feature, we're going to go over to the wonderful King of the Kipax magazine for a, a fan's view of the night and a, a fan's view of the game and uh, report uh, as featuring King of the 
Kipax issue 233, May 2016. So obviously it's the it's the feature entitled How Was It How Was It For You? So we're going over to that to the fans feature and of course we're going over to Mr. Steve Parrish who was uh, obviously there with many of us that night to watch this but just his little views on the game and what happened so uh, my little excerpt from the King of the Kipax there so here we go as fans streamed off the Metrolink I was a bit surprised for a club facing allegations of racism two years ago that PSG fans were remarkably diverse I suspect also that having given us the Metro in the Paris they weren't too impressed by our local version oh, nothing wrong with our Metro I think it's alright uh, you'd also think that City might have thought twice about greeting the arrival of a team from Paris with explosions. It's a football match, not a royal birthday. No, part of the course. Well, maybe it was to say we can accelerate being in the UEFA semi-final in other ways than booing the anthem. City with Yaya on the bench, company not ready, and Aguero thankfully fit after the pullish treatment against West Brom. Started brightly, but PSG gradually took control of possession, aided by a referee, no surprise there, who had known if he was Spanish might have got a shout of Dos Equipos Sobrito as PSG pushes went unpunished and City nudges through free kicks. From one justified free kick way out, Ibram... Ibram Ibramovic uh, bent the ball over the wall, but Hart tipped it over for all possession. It was PSG's only real chance of the half. Yeah, Hart played pretty well again. City, meanwhile, had some good play on the counter. Sergio shooting well wide after neat passes by Silva and De Bruyne. And when in the 25th minute, Ibramovic was dispossessed by Fernandinho in his own half. De Bruyne put Sergio through to be brought down by the PSG keeper. Trapped for a penalty. Uh, Trapp escaped a red card and when Sergio put the penalty wide, Trapp's actions looked to be well rewarded. Miss a penalty? Never. Never heard of it. No, never happens. Never happens. Uh, PSG had been knocked back a bit. Never shot past the post and at half time City was still in command of the time. Though the fans were maybe more nervous than the players. Yeah, I think we were. I mean, it's sort of say we were still going through at that stage, but one goal could change everything, couldn't it? Highlight the half, other than getting the penalty, was Sun Tom's personal catering service. There you go. Well done, Sun Tom. He braved the queue for the burgers before kickoff and then was told it was a 10 minute wait so they delivered it to his seat they could catch on there you go fantastic food delivered to your seat at the Etihad who'd have, who'd have thunk it on the restart PSG once more took the reins but City's defence was resolutely a bit messy from one unjustified three kick as Fernan Fernando nicked the ball before any contact Ibrimovic kick Ibrimovic's kick round the ball was turned around the post by Hart. Again, City came back with a series of corners and PSG were under a bit of pressure. With two defenders booked in quick succession on 75 minutes, a bit of one-touch play around the PSG penalty area, Clichy to Navas to Fernandino, saw De Bruyne take one touch, then curl his shot into the corner of the net. Sergio, in an offside position, had to breathe in to let it pass his chest, but no one... Not even PSG claimed he interfered. Perhaps if VAR had been around, we would have had that scrubbed out as well. You never know. PSG needing two goals now managed a late rally. Cavani forced another good save from Hart and PSG twice had the ball in the net but both times the flag went up for offside and the gaps they left meant City looked as likely to score. Ya Ya for De Bruyne and Del for Silva showed things up and to waste time after the 90 minutes Ian Acho got a brief run out for Aguero who was spared flack for his penalty miss. There wasn't even time for an extra syllable Iaccio chant as the roar for the end of the match with fewer fans than usual having left before the final whistle came soon after. There you go. So thank you to Mr. Steve Parrish and the King of the Kipax there for a little fans viewpoint of the game. I was there that night. As I say, I think it was a nervy affair. Obviously, the disappointment uh, of the game after was going to be uh, a bit sad. But uh, it was, of course, enough for City's arrival in their first ever Champions League semi-final. So there you go. That's uh, a bit of history of City and PSG as we look forward to hopefully another little bit of good history to be created and not a horrible history as we look forward to that game. I hope you enjoyed that anyway. Please please check out all my City Sutty stuff, past and present, that's uh, on the playlist there and uh, hope you enjoy that little feature looking back at our two previous meetings with the PSG at the Etihad. Anyway, let me know in the comments what you think. Any memories you've got of that night as well, or any both the nights, if you've any, any particular uh, memories to say. I can remember the last one a little bit better for what I can remember than, than the one further back in time, obviously. Anyway, thanks for watching. Whatever you're going to do the rest of the day, have a great one. Look after yourselves, look after your friends, look after your families. More importantly, let's all look after each other. Till we meet here again on the Citizen Channel, or perhaps have a, have a look at my uh, film and TV channel, wherever it is. All I ever say to you is please stay safe, Blues. Come on, City. Thanks for watching. Bye for now.